All you need to do to make your columns bigger or smaller is when you've selected the gradebook. If you click on the column at the top, you'll see where the blue box is. Right now it's landed on test and then FSM, which is free school meals. The little circle, if you put your finger on the circle, hold down and you can adjust the size of the column. But if you've got a column that you don't want, if you hold your finger down so that, that little black strip with loads of options appears, you can delete it by pressing the bin. Well, looking at this data, we've got some MA students, a service child, some people premium students, and you might want to highlight them in your mark book. So again, what you do on the, on the name is you just hold your finger on the name, and it gives you that little black strip of options. And what you want is the one that looks like a, a tin of paint being poured out. So we'll see it there on Gavin, little tin of paint being poured out. Choose your colour, and you can colour code. So you can see we've gone with uh, service child in blue. And I've chosen one for pupil premium, and now I'm about to choose one for uh, academically more able students. And it highlights them in your mark book then. And what you need next is to press the circle top right hand corner with a plus sign in it and choose column and you can add a column and start putting in data from things that you mark. Now the cell editor is where you choose whether you want to be putting numbers in or you want to be putting letters in or you want to be putting icons in. It's easily changed, don't stress about that. The grade type is um, how you want it to be displayed on your mark sheet. So you can see the one selected there is from 0 to 100. If you happen to put a letter in when you come to do it, it won't break it or anything. So don't worry about that. Just have a little experiment with those and you'll soon get the hang of it. And once you've decided your column heading, you've decided to sell it, your cell editor and uh, your grade type, then you can start inputting marks from the students and it's all easily changed. So don't fret about getting it wrong. You can just go back, delete it, alter things. Just have a go. You'll understand it more from having a go yourself. One of the things which is fantastic that I make great use of, even even when I'm not doing something out of 100%, um, I'll, I'll somehow convert it into 100%, like I'll do grade 9 as 90%, um, is the automatic colours. So when you click on grade type, as you can see me doing, if you change the option to from 0 to 100 with W slash colours, with colours, um, then when you put a grade in, it'll automatically give you a colour. So it colour codes how well a student's been doing. And it really shows up quite obviously on your mark book. So you'll see in there, Bob getting 40%, Ben getting 60%. You see the colour changes um, how well the person happens to do. Betty's done quite well and, and Bobby's done magnificently. And it'll zoom out and show you all the colours together. And it really gives you an impression of how well the class has done. A bit of a problem can be too much colour, and I started off showing you how the students can be coloured. Well, I actually did that to originally, and decided it would be better to do something else, because it was getting a bit overwhelming. So instead, if you choose the star option in that little black strip of options when you've held your finger over a name, then instead of putting a colour in, uh, well, you, you can put a star in. You can also hold your finger down for the colour and take the colour off that you'd put on originally. Again, this is a bit, bit more advanced, this one. You're trying to put things into the same folder, so instead of it all being on one big screen. So this time you click that same plus sign in a circle, but this time you choose Category Folder. Name your category, as you can see I'm doing on here. Choose what you want 
the main folder to show when everything's closed. You'll see what that means in a minute. And then you have to click the little spanner in a circle on the top left hand corner and choose columns and categories. And you choose which categories, which, which of the, the columns that you've already created should go in that folder by just pressing on the little circle at the side that gives you a tick. And when you've pressed all the ones that you want, you then select cut from the top. There's little blue options at the top. And then you press on the white, well I'm going to press on the white chapel one because that's the one that I want it to go into. And I'm going to put paste, which is also at the top. And you can see they've all appeared in there. And there they are, look. And you can see I can shut it by just clicking the little folder picture on that top bar and open them out. But what you can also do is add a new category straight into that folder. And, and you can see me doing it there. You have to press the three little dots in the top right hand corner. And I'm adding a subject knowledge test here because what you can see um, is if you look at the, the, the main folder thing where it says 6.38 next to Bob and 4.5. When you change the score in subject knowledge, it changes that score as well. It's, even though some of the scores are, uh, are in like 180, it changes that score. Um, so it gives you an idea of how all the students are doing in one particular unit. In that case, it's the Whitechapel unit in, in history. Um, and it's really useful for organising what will probably end up being a huge amount of information over a two-year course. click on the seating plan you get all the students in there all you do is click and drag drag all the students around like that and, and you can set them out how your room looks you can also color code your seating plan to make it look um, so you can identify the pupil premium students the MA students and so on so I'll just look back at the grade book what you do is you hold your finger down just like you did before on the grade book section choose the, the paint uh, tin with the paint coming out of it and then choose your colour, simple as that. You can actually display one column of information on any of the seating plans shown. There are other options I'll show you in a minute but you can see here you just click on the, well as it says click the column thing, choose the column you want. If you click the three little dots top right hand corner you've got some choices of of how your seating plan appears of how each each person appears and you've got the badge option which is where you can actually select more and uh, th more information to display it's got as a disadvantage because it's it's quite big on the screen so it takes up a lot of space but as you can see it means I can show minimum grade pupil premium and what they got on the mock at the end of year 10 On the seating plan there's a random selector option which is good for a bit of hands down questioning to keep them all on their toes. Um, so yeah, it's as it says on the tin, really useful in lessons. And now one last, maybe a bit more advanced way of using it. If you hold your finger down on a student's name until you get that option, choose the, the second one in with like the circle of a face in it. Then when you get that, choose add photo, take picture. You could go around the class taking pictures of students, potentially holding up a useful piece of information which will help you to focus on them and what their needs are. My idea was to get them to put a key target that you've given them um, on the photograph. They could hold it up like that and it's as quick as just snap and take photo. And what you will see is it will appear there on your seating plan. Um, so I thought that one way that could improve outcomes because it might focus our teaching a little bit more. Just an idea anyway. <laughs> <laughs>